Catch the latest news on our website, tribune.net.ph, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Tribune Now. The Daily Tribune is one with the nation in facing the COVID-19 crisis, and in line with this, the Daily Tribune Digital Edition on Press Reader is now available for free online. You can also download the Daily Tribune app on Apple Store for iOS users and Google Play for Android users to get the latest and most comprehensive news online. Daily Tribune is also inviting everyone to join its community Viper Katribu to get updates on the freshest and hottest news and entertainment stories of the day. Tarasito emoticons are also available on our community Viber. Just click on the link in this video to join. Good morning everyone, good morning mga katribu, I'm Tina Maralit and this is Straight Talk where we take you to the front seat of the discussion regarding the country's hottest issues today without fear, without favor. And joining me right now as my special guest co-host, remotely, Daily Tribune Managing Editor, Mr. Alvin Cardona. Hi Sir Aldrin, good morning po. Good morning po sa inyong lahat. Yeah, and Sir Aldrin, this morning we're going to have a very interesting discussion. This has been a long time coming and I'm sure ex you're as excited as I am. So ipapakilala ko na po ang ating special na panahuhin for this special episode. Former City of Manila Mayor and now Buhay Partilist Representative, Congressman Lito Atienza. Con Good morning po, Sir Lito. Buhay and magandang mga sa so, Sir Aldrin, alam ko yung hihintay mo itong episode na ito, so fire away. Magandang umaga po, Congressman, Mayor, Sir. Opo, opo, Sir, sir Aldrin. <laughs> well, gusto ko lang po malaman ng taong bayan na when you were mayor and I was the president of the Philippine Sports Writers Association, si Manila, former Manila Mayor Lito Achenza po, ang aming anghel. Tinulungan po niya yung lahat ng sports writers do sa aming Philippine Sports Writers Association Forum. At minsan po naigigest din namin siya. At nung kasagsagan po ng laban ng dalawang congressman para sa speakership, isa rin po ang ating butihing buhay partilist congressman na si uh, Congressman Mayor Achenza na lagi natin nakakausap. Pero, Congressman, uh, gusto lang po namin malaman kasi kung konti lang po yung uh, mga mm, mga tao, lalo na yung mga millennial na nakakaalam yung about buhay party list. Ano pa itong buhay party list? At ano po ba mga advocacies nito? Basically, ang um, buhay party list ay uh, na-organize namin as an offshoot of our advocacy which is to uh, promote the culture of life in the country. And uh, part of what, which is the promotion also of a pro-life philosophy in everything that we do to shift or to remove the mindset of our people toward valuing life more than anything else. In other words, it's a values uh, transformation and reformation um, advocacy that we uh, engaged in at the time, I was the president of Pro-Life Philippines. That's a group of pro-lifers organized to really promote the proper valuing of life. And uh, we decided to form Boy Partilis in the year 2000, precisely to have a say in the molding of uh, our national thinking through legislation, the uh, pro-life philosophy. That at that time, Masyado nang malakas yung mga anti-life ideas and ideologies like same-sex marriage, even abortion was already beginning to take roots in some minds of our legislators. And we said we need a voice in Congress. Otherwise, our congressmen could make a very, very grievous error of embracing an anti-life thinking for uh, the nation and to us, to me, personally, I know that that would be the final, final uh, uh, nail to the nation's uh, destruction. Pag tayo mga Pilipino, in spite of our upbringing, the foundations of our families, kumakap tayo sa 
ideology, which is basically anti-life, and legalize abortion in the country, so this is a matter of survival, and we decided to form Buhay Party Lisa. And fortunately, in the first election where we participated, 2001, we immediately won two seats, and then three seats, then two seats, then three seats, two and three lang. But uh, times have changed, and uh, uh, our elect election uh, processes have already deteriorated. Ngayon, ang party list ay iba na eh. Parang medyo may nangyayaring hindi tama. Dahil ang boto ng party list, hindi binibilang, ina-announce lang. Meaning, I'll dream. After a big campaign, like for instance, 2019, walang bilangan yun eh. Basta sasabihin lang ng Komilek. And finally, the party list, the following, garnered winning vote. Ganun lang. So, Anong ibig sabihin nun? Pwedeng ma-manipulate, pwedeng magkabilihan ng boto, pwedeng magkabilihan ng, ng resulta. Kaya, kami sa, sa buhay, we are very, very concerned because in this manner, there are many groups now in Congress who may not really be representing anything but their political interest to become members of Congress. And to do so, they did not stop at anything, even to pay off public officials, smartmatic officials, to get vote, enough votes to qualify them for one seat, at least two seats. E iba na ang ating eleksyon ngayon, lalo-lalo na when it concerns to the party list uh, processes followed in the election and in the canvassing. Meron ka ba nakita eleksyon na walang bilangan? Even in class, election sa eskwela. Yung botohan at saka yung bilangan, transparent, di ba? O, oh, ito kay Aldrin, ito kay Tina, Aldrin, Tina, Tina, Aldrin, Tina, Tina. E sa COMELEC, ating national election today, when it regards to the party list, wala nang canvassing. So we don't know how many votes we got. It is only now, we are all dependent on what the COMELEC announces later on. And that is very, very prone to, you know what, to the uh, corruption that is now sweeping the land. Well, <laughs> sir, we did not expect to start our interview with you with this very hot topic at once. Yes. <laughs> we're supposed to ask you that questions, but since we're here, I, di ba kayo ay member nung, is it a foundation or an organization of party list uh, congressmen? Yes. Have you discussed this with them? Uh, we do, but except that many times we are occupied with very urgent political issues like the recent congressional struggle. Uh, we were at the forefront of uh, promoting the term sharing agreement. So, wala kaming time na maupo at pag-usabit tungkol dito sa lapak. Napakahalagang bagay na ito. Pero very, very critical and very important. So, one of these days, I will really pull down the leadership of the coalition and we should sit down on it. And we should initiate reforms in our electoral process para yung, yung purely uh, smartmatic control should really now be adjusted. Yung canvassing dapat physical manual. Yung voting would be by um, by Smartmatic, yung canvassing manual and physical. Tapos yung transmittal could be uh, again by by internet, by, te by technology. Pero yung canvassing should really be restored to manual. That's the only way to improve and to prevent the further deterioration of our electoral policy. Yes, sir. Because even the president last year, he lamented yung sinasabi nga niyang irregularities, so-called irregularities with regards to the use of Smartmatic and the, in the elections, and he wanted it out. But Komilek said, there's no time to look for another <laughs> provider. And uh, with this close to the next elections, parang... They're pressed for time nga po. So how, how are we supposed to arrive at a compromise, I guess? You remember Pugo? The comedian before okay. Pugo. 
Yes, sir. Oh, let me do a call book. Oh, yes, sir. He used to be number one together with Dolphy. Before Dolphy, he would answer that question with a very simple word, Tina. Yes, That's sir. That's a lesson and sense. So, I said, I'm going to go back to my dad. I love to go back to You want a status quo. Uh, I'm addressing the Comelec as an organization, not nobody in particular. But the Comelec, I believe, is happy with the present situation. Imagine sila ang tumatagad ng boto, sila ang magbibilang in secrecy, sila ang mag-a-announce of one over the sooner than announce. If you ask and inquire during the process, you will not be given any data. They, how many votes did I get in uh, Manila? Dead man, they, they will not even answer you. You'll get that later on. Later on, you after they fix up the whole picture. The whole so you're, you are doing things uh, blindly, no? You're seeing things uh, uh, vaguely. Because you don't even know where the party list is strong or where, where it is weak. Uh, uh, paano yun? <laughs> Dumami kayo. Diba? You're 50. Okay, uh -huh. right now. Eh, meron nga ano eh, provinsyano, dalawang party list, dalawang provinsyano word. Eh, medyo hindi yata tama yun, anong, anong advocacy ng provinsyano. Ako nga, iniisip ko, sabi ko eh, if I were to organize the party list today, pero meeting ko, eat bulaga. <laughs> para kinilang kinilang na sir, di ba? <laughs> di ba? Para labanan yung provinsyano, eat bulaga. <laughs> There are party tests which are being red-tagged. Uh, now, sino ngayon yung uh, parang nangyayari? Ang usapan na is, ano ba ang tunay na party list? Uh, ito, this one, provincia, ano? Anong nire-represent? Ikaw, clear yung nire-represent mo and so, and so many other uh, party lists. And here are party lists which are um, identified with the left. And now they're being is out. Pa Paano ang role ninyo sa kongreso kung hindi malinaw para sa atin kung ano yung party list? Many, many elections after it was introduced. I really hope the president takes a direct hand because he's the only one who can direct COMELEC to act accordingly. Because without the COMELEC's action and participation, It's almost impossible to adjust our electoral process without the president's direct uh, participation. But when he's the president, he gives the direction of the Congress, and I think we will get results in that manner. Otherwise, it's almost an impossibility to break into the uh, web, web of restrictions and constrictions and I don't know what to be able to get a seat but I know that there are many many questionable questionable seats that are now occupied by people I'm even surprised how they made it I believe I believe money plays a very very important role yeah, so sir ang aga-aga pero iniinit ang diskusyon natin. Di ba? Marami pa tayo pag-uusapan. Pero sir, more of our discussion, mag-break lang po tayo sandali. More of straight talk with Congressman Lito Atienza when we return. This is a very important story. The important story. Today, we feel the weight of history on our shoulders. The way we have been moving leads nowhere. We need to change course. Since the United Nations was founded, the human race has never had to face a set of challenges like we do right now. But together, we can overcome them.
You're still here with us at Straight Talk with my co-host, Daily yes. Tribune Managing Editor Aldrin Cardona, and our special guest, Buhay Party List Representative, Congressman Lito at the answer. So, Sir Aldrin, mainit-init bago tayo nag-break. Painitin mo pa yeah. lalo. <laughs> Actually, we needed that break. <laughs> Hindi ako makahinga sa mga revelations. Oo, oh, oh, aga, di ba, Sir? Intensa. <laughs> <laughs> Congressman, isang light question lang po. Tinanong ko rin to kay Ali before. Hindi niya masagot. Ilan po ba talaga ang inyong floral polo? <laughs> <laughs> Oo nga, sir. That's a very good question, you know. Because <laughs> ang connection ko ng mga floral polo shares, hindi ko na mabilan sapagkat magmula nung umpisa ang aming um, public life, talaga nagpo-promote na ako ng floral shares. And, So every occasion, every time I travel, every time I have an opportunity to go around Manila and go to the mall, I got attracted to floral design shirts and I kept on getting them. Gifts for Christmas, I received a lot of them. Birthday, anniversary, special occasions, my friends know how I love floral shirts, so they would give me floral shirts. Marami dito, hindi ko pa nagagamit. Nasa cabinet ko. In fact, uh, Aldrin, I'll send you one. I'll send you, one. I'll, I'll send you. you know why? You're wearing a very dark, shaded gray today. Uh, I'm wearing a floral shirt. But I'll uh, send you one. Your day will change. Your mindset for the day will always be lighter, joyful, friendly, relaxed. Because floral designs especially in a tropical country like ours, promote a totally different outlook on your day's life. And like you will realize it will help you be more productive and be more uh, be friendlier to your fellow workers because you are wearing a colorful floral shirt. So, Congressman, nung may magulo po ba sa Congress, nagsusot din kayo ng floral para mag-iba naman yung mindset ng mga kasama Alam nyo. Ang mga talaga ang sinubukan ko na even in Congress, I would wear a floral design shirt and I would just top it off with a coat, a jacket to give it a little more formality because I realize and I accept the Philippines, a floral shirt does not uh, conform with the norms that we have in our minds. You are very informal if you are in a floral shirt. But there are places like Hawaii where a floral shirt is accepted as an attire for formal affairs. So I tried doing that in Congress. But they barred, they barred me from speaking on the floor because there's a silly rule in Congress today that does not allow any member <laughs> to speak on the floor if you do not wear a tie and a, a shirt and tie and a, if you're not wearing a suit or a bottom tagalog. I chose Barong Tagalog instead. Kasi para sa akin yung coat and tie is a serious attire that a Filipino can use in the Philippines. Ang inid-inid dito is the time on may bagyo. Kaya medyo press ko dahil may bagyo. Pero normal time, you're wearing a tie around your neck. That's only for the Occidental countries, the Western world, where there is snow, cold weather, and you need to close your neck and protect your neck from the cold. In Saturn, why are you wearing a, 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 a coat and tie? I would not want to feel silly. Yung importante, if you don't feel good about your attire, you won't feel good that particular day. So I tried talking from the floor with a floral shirt and a, and a coat to top it off. I will open a gun. There silly rule. They will only allow you if you are wearing a tie. So, I didn't even tie your floral shirt, though. <laughs> <laughs> And I challenged the leadership. Oh, I'm wearing a tie now. Yeah, but okay. your shirt is not white. Who said, who said that a shirt is white? Be white? <laughs> What do you mean floral and colorful? And I'm wearing a tie. They would say, who didn't allow it? Rather than among Sutuva and Cameroon. Did you never do it? And then, who did not converse with the Congress? But there'll come a time, I'm sure. Well, Filipinos will accept my theory and my philosophy. Actually, Our shirts are Filipino. Actually, sir, uso yan. Uso yan. just recently, you see bands 
you see artistas mm-hmm. wearing floral shirts like, kunyari, si Jericho Rosales, he'll wear one. So I did. Pero every time I wear one, hindi ako tinatawag na Jericho Rosales. Ang tawag sa akin, Mayor Atienza. <laughs> <laughs> May kasama pang kanta. <laughs> I know a politician who tried wearing a floral shirt. Senator Ping Lacson. Mm. Ano, naka-floral siya, sabi ng mga kasama niya. Kamukha ko, naging kamukha ko si Mayor Atienza. I don't think that is it. To me, nangihinaya ko dahil he would have uh, been a big booster to my efforts to promote floral shirts among Filipinos. Okay. Sir, babalik na tayo sa serious question. Which, okay, yan na. Painitin natin ulit. Kasi what you were saying uh, earlier, uh, I'm not quite reassuring. Uh, we're now beginning to really question the electoral process. And then, if may question tayo doon sa, sa botohan para sa mga party lists, how are you being treated uh, in, in, in Congress? How are the regular congressmen representing uh, districts treating party list congressmen who represent advocacies? Meron ba kayong equality pagdating sa sa treatment? Dapat walang diferensya, no? Dapat walang discriminatory attitude. Pero meron. In fact, depending on the speaker. Pag ang speaker mag-isip ay tama at patas and constitutional in this thinking, ay dapat pare-pareho. District representative, party list representative. Pero may mga speaker na talagang masyadong biased para sa kanila, yung party list uh, representatives are second class citizen without realizing that is a wrong notion. Look what happened to Caetano. The group that led his final ouster for the party list member. Was he yes. saved? Was he saved by the uh, district representatives that he favored, giving billions of pesos for their districts and discounting and disregarding the interest of the party list member, nung nag-coagulate yung party list for Velasco, to me, that was the turning point. I was about to go there. Ang, ang downfall ni, ni Caetano uh, came from the party list. Party list, yes. Malaki. No, we can no longer just say that it's just a party list conference. Malaki pala ang boses ng party list uh, members. Uh, are you really that united, uh, uh, Congressman? Almost. Almost. I would say that we are uh, 90% united. Okay. Except for some committed uh, members of the coalition who had a special interest to protect with the status quo. I'll give you some examples. Like Mike Defensor, his party list. Bartoleta is part of this. And uh, the other guys in the group of Caetano who are part of this member. But generally, the ordinary member of the coalition uh, followed, followed the thinking of the, gen- of the general thinking in the organization that part of these members are second class citizens under this dispensation and reforms have to be made starting with respecting the word of honor. We are the ones who kept on harping on that. Word of honor, term sharing, must be respected, and the term sharing agreement must be fulfilled. Ayun naman ang aming pinaglaban, marami namang nagising sa katotohanan. The rest is history. We won our struggle, and we prevail. We have a new speaker. Was there a doubt on your part that uh, you're going to achieve that goal of having the the speakership uh, 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 transferred to well, it was not transferred, obviously, but for say, uh, Congressman Velasco, the incumbent gave up. That's what happened. He stepped down when he says he resigned. I disagree with that. He was ousted. He was ousted. He was ousted by a big number of congressmen 
and the big bang on that came from the party this group. And when he was ousted, he was forced to resign. But if you ask me, was I confident from the very start about the outcome? I'd answer you very candidly, no. I really felt uh, worried that Caetano had a very strong grip on power when he decided to uh, dishonor his own words and he decided to even go against the president's uh, admonition. I think he overestimated himself and underestimated the thinking of individual members in Congress. When the two met, the overestimation and the underestimation, that meant that spell is ousted. Akala niya, yung hold niya, yung 200 na bumit mo sa kanya, you can yes. hold on to it forever. Yes. Not realize the congressman can change minds by the hour. <laughs> so, it was too late for him to realize, wala na pala yung 200, ando na sa 186. <laughs> mm. well, you just said that a speaker can be changed by the hour. Uh, does that mean that there is a possibility that makabalik pa or iba naman ang iupo? Uh, 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 How bang relasyon natin ngayon kay Tia? It, it, is, it is always a uh, probability uh, or a possibility but not a probability right now. Because everybody wants to give Velasco a chance mm -hmm. yeah. to show his uh, capacity and he could be a better leader and a fair speaker for everyone. So at this point in time, he's already solidly uh, in his seat. Then, pati yung mga fence-seater, nagbalik tala na after the fact. After, oh. after the, the election of uh, Velasco, nakaka-disgusto na na Marinig mo yung mga parties one after the other. We swear our full support. Of course you do. You would. Because he's already speaker of the house. But then he was sabi after sitting on the fence like Humpty Dumpty for uh, so long a period of time. And then after the battle is uh, clear, the smoke clears from the battleground. Alam mo na ko sila nanalo. Ah, dito ako kay Velasco. All of us are committed to Velasco. Right now, Velasco has about 280 plus of uh, members committed to him. So how can you unseat somebody like that? Mm -hmm. That's he, Medyo mahira. Mahira, even if uh, Kaitano tries to attempt, I'm sure he will have a hard time. Okay. We also interviewed Velasco uh, last week. Uh, kasi hindi siya masyado, ano eh, uh, Mahilig sa publicity. That's what we noticed about him. Uh, when we talk to him, maybe, uh, ordinary yung tao ang dati niya. Uh, how is he now as a leader uh, ha having 200, 300 uh, congressmen uh, beside him? He hasn't changed. Frankly, I see him now as he was before. Very, very soft spoken. Meek, humble. Hindi mayabang to see the last school. Wala, wala siya nung natural uh, ragadosyo. Hindi eh, nagyayabang. Uh, trabaho lang. So, I, I think he will go far as a speaker. He may even turn out to be one of the best we have. Uh -huh. If he continues what he's doing and uh, just slowly reform the institution. Because Congress has to be reformed, I think. One of, our, uh, one of my worries and my concerns is how Congress has deteriorated to the different elections and periods. And right now, the president is correct to look into the angle of corruption that has pervaded the halls of Congress. And para ang, ang Congress ngayon ay naging nothing but the source of power. And how many times did you hear the last men brag about their power? The mga hearing ng ABS, mga hearing nila na na kanilang pinamunuan, they always brag about, we have the power. Uh -huh. Excuse me, you are not the power. The power still rests in the people. Mm -hmm. We are elected for a term. After three years, many of us will realize people will no longer vote for us. 
then we have no more power. The power which should always reside in the people, not the members of Congress elected. Pero ngayon, ang tindi ng marami, eh, amin yung power eh. Uh, power over the purse. Power over appointment. Power over the movements in, uh, in government. So, that has to be corrected. Congressmen should concentrate on legislative functions. You and I have responsibility, and I wouldn't even call it power. If power to legislate, yes. Power to abuse and commit doubtful and questionable acts, I don't think that is, should be the equated with power. That is corruption. Wow. So, na akin yung kapabasa, Adrian? Parang pinipiga eh. Parang pinipisil. Mm. <laughs> so, sir, ako, uh, so, uh, papasok lang ako, sir, uh, sandali. Sir, kasi sir, na, uh, congressman, nakabanggit nyo nga kanina na because with Congressman Velasco now at the helm of the House of Representatives na you expect talaga big changes to come in the institution and particularly with the president's call against corruption and yung sabi nyo nga, Congressmen should focus on their legislative functions. With Congressman Velasco, no Speaker of the House, how will this in, uh, play into the call of the President? Yung sa mga gusto pa niyang um, bagong departments na, ma, na mabuo, like the Department of OFW. Tapos pati kanina may nabanggit din si Presidente Duterte about uh, having another agency then for seafarers. Uh, will this fast track everything with Speaker Velasco at the helm? Um, not necessarily. Of course, Velasco is a very, very strong pillar of uh, President Duterte's administration. No doubt about that. But uh, there are people like me who speak out with him and uh, may not, I may not agree that solutions to our national problems are always to create a new department. We just created a, a department of housing. What is it doing now? Is it producing more units for the homeless? Mm -hmm. The answer is no. Because we created a department over the objections of people like Atienza, and we did not uh, gain, as we wanted, from any improvement in the performance of housing production with the creation of the department. And you have a solution the Department of Housing, and solution Pera. We get on Pera, your National Housing Authority, and the housing sector, as we had already, the HUBCC, Housing and Urban Development Council. Kung may Pera yan, at may kapangyarihan yan sa production of more houses, yun ang solusyon sa pabahay. But they insisted on creating a department. So where is the department now? I was listening to the interview of Secretary De Rosario, the chief of the Department of Housing, how can we deliver a solution to the 6.4 million backlog of housing for the Filipinos if we do not have enough money in our budget? We were asking for 77 billion pesos for 2021, and they were given by the executive department, by the DBM, 4.2 billion, or 4 billion plus. From 77 to be able to produce enough to catch up with the problem, with the backlog, they were given a missing 4 billion. So, a lot of time I expect the Department of Housing, a newly created department of that, to be in our dinagawa. So, creating a department for seafarers, department for OFW, and we have a department to prevent the arrival of typhoons in the Philippines. <laughs> And in this solution and creation of another level of bureaucracy, if we know what the real problem is, the problem is money. So the existing department will do better if they're given more support. Okay, that's where Congress comes in. You make the money for the government. Uh, but what led to Caetano's downfall was also money. How is Congress going to safeguard the national fund? Uh, nakita na natin maraming insert funds. Uh, with Speaker Velasco, ano po ang ginawa ninyo in four days 
to assure that there will be no more insertions in the national budget. I mean, you cannot untie in four days what has been crumpled and not yes. together exactly. by uh, 30, 40 years. Pasyado ng malalim ang ang nangyayari sa Congreso that Velasco will have to do it very slowly if he does it all of a sudden overnight and tries to change it, it could delay the budget. That's okay. what GMA tried to do during that time. It delayed the budget, we have to be happy with the way the reenacted budget, and that would cause more problems for the people. So Velasco is now walking a tightrope. He has to do reforms, but at the same time being careful not to really on top of them, uh, you turn the apple cart upside down. You cannot do that because the apples will be spilling all over the, the street. Very important going on because he has to realize the bigger picture of the responsibilities of the speaker. He is the leader of the house. He has to slowly but surely reform every part of the congressional functions without really causing so much problems for the nation, for the people, who will eventually also condemn him for that. Ikaw naman, masyado ka nagmamadali. Ikaw naman ganito eh. Even the replacement of certain people is going very slow. But I cannot blame him. I do understand him that he has to be careful so as to be able to accomplish what you intend to do to reform the whole institution without really uh, causing so much dislocation which could affect the performance of his administration. Gusto rin naman niya mag-succeed. Gusto niya mag-succeed to President Duterte. And ayaw niya ng revolution immediately. Kapag pag masyado ka humawak ng latigo, baka ikaw ang paluhin ng latigo. You see? So you're now in a, uh, you're practically in a cage with so many lions. You have to tame them. Your job is to be able to get the lions to behave, but do not confront them with, with the same force that they are meeting you upon entry in the cage. So he has to do it the right way. And I agree with you. I will have to be very careful the way I handle City Hall. When I became mayor, City Hall was in a mess. Our budget was only about $2.7 a year. So much corruption was going on in the collection and in the appropriation. And I had to be very, very meticulous about selection of people, uh, processes to be followed, checking and counter-checking every day the finances of the city. Without raising taxes, I succeeded in what I was doing. I was able to raise the annual budget of the city government after nine years of my administration without raising taxes. Almost eight billion. That to me is the best example of how to go reforming in the bureaucracy, local and national, Parewian, without uh, causing so much uh, damage to it. With your good, with your, actually your good desire and design to improve the system and reform the system. You can do it without really shooting people all, 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 all over the place uh, and do it effectively without dislocating, dislocating the system. Remember, we are a democracy and the majority will always prevail. E kung mali yung ginawa mo, baka yung majority goes against you. Relax lang. Dahan-dahan. Good old Good old Filipino say, yung makukuha mo ng paupo, huwag mo nang gawin pa tayo. Relax na. Kapan, mukhang yung week lang po, may tato. Yan ang gumagala ngayon. But you, you were in Velasco's age, you fought a dictatorship, you challenged uh, a very strong uh, uh, dic uh, system. Iba yung laban nyo nun. Mas mas kumbaga sugod na sugod tao <laughs> da, da lang i remember uh, you you ran for the batasan and 
ang kalaban niya mabibigat. I, 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 you were the only one who, who made it, di ba? Uh, paano ba yan? Uh, pag nagkakaidod ba tayo, ang balansin natin na uh, naiiba? <laughs> um, you come to realize that the establishment sometimes become, becomes very, very heavy and you cannot shoulder the whole thing on, your, on one shoulder. You have to get more allies. You have to be uh, more uh, more open, more giving, even understanding, and you're getting what you want in the project. When I entered the city government as vice mayor, Aldrin, wala ako ni isang konsihal na kasama. Out of 38 councillors, I did not have one single councillor with me. <laughs> How do you get your legislative agenda eh kung wala ka sa Kampisa City Council, ako yung presiding officer. And Mayor Lim, God bless his soul, iba ang attitude niya. Girayin mo na! Awayin mo! Tagot kita! <laughs> I disagree with him. I said, makukuha ko gusto natin, pero I don't need to quarrel with each and every councillor, otherwise we'll freeze into inaction. Hindi ka makakagalaw as mayor. The whole councillors are after your skull. So, ayaw natin yan. I'll get what you want done in the shortest possible time. But let me gain strength from within. So slowly, slowly, I convince each and every councillor that he, he or she will have to join us in the reform campaign. And after about eight months, eight months, it took me eight months, I developed loyalties out of 22 councillors. And that's the time I hit the establishment. I said, I want a council reorganized, elect a majority leader who's friendly to us. I had 22 members on my side. There was 16. So that was the beginning of the reforms in our administration in Sidon. If I allowed Lin to have his way on day one, sabi niya, awayin mo na! Ano kayo? Wala tayong magagawa. Di maintindihan ng tao yan. That's not how I, how I look at it there. Let's do it with, a, as, much, with as, much, as much less pain as possible. We can do it. We're like dentists. We can put teeth with a minimum of pain. I don't want to be the, the dentist that I grew up with. Basta bubunutin yung ibig. Bahala ka sa buhay mo. I, when I met a, a dentist who can do the pulling of wisdom teeth, I tell you, ito, ito dentist ha. Yun ang mga natanim sa isip ko. You can do things without really shocking. Yung shock and awe. Yung araw yun eh. Pero ngayon, there are better ways of doing things. To minimize the damage. Do not blow up the whole building. Get all the cockroaches out from every corner, but do not blow it up. Sayang naman yung building. Yeah, so Sir Aldrin, uh, Congressman, sorry po. Uh, we're yeah. out, unfortunately out of time, pero Sir Aldrin, last question for you before we ask for uh, the Congressman's final word for today. Naintindihan ko na ngayon kung ano nangyari sa Kongreso. Base doon sa kinuwento sa atin ni Congressman Achenza, nangyari sa kanya several years ago when mm -hmm. he was still fighting. Yes. So, Sir Elgin, your last question for the Congressman? Well, uh, maraming beses na kami nagkausap. I'll give you the time to ask Congressman a chance at the last question. So, Sir, unfortunately, wala na po tayong oras. Ang saya sana ng magiging usapan natin kung mas mahaba pa. Congressman, I'll just ask for your final message to our kababayan for this morning po. Ang aking mensahe, nilalagay ko sa tamang konteksto na yun, anong problema ng bayan? Anong problema ng Pilipinas? Bakit tayo mahirap? Eh kung ang puno ng yaman ang ating kalikasan, we look around, we see natural resources everywhere. We have every mineral needed by the whole world. We are one of the richest in gold condition. We have oil in the Philippines. So why do we remain poor? The number one problem is corruption. Number one problem is corruption. Will the president see in a new campaign? I hope he does. And I will support him all the way. But it will not be easy. 
because corruption is in all levels, all levels of government now, not just in Congress, it's in the executive, it's in the different departments. Siguro, advantage ko na marami na akong department na nasalihan, DNR, local government, Batas ang Pambansa, National Housing, and now in Congress, I know that how deep and how widespread corruption is in the bureaucracy. From the lowest level, the barangay, and then our corruption. We're training SKs, but they're they learning from the very start. Corruption. So when they grow up to become regular barangay chairman, they're learning poison in Pag-iisip nila. I need to make an extra buck. I need to make extra money out of this position. So we have to change all of this uh, thinking and we need President Duterte's determination. That's why I said I would support him in this campaign because I know that that is the only hindrance for a better life for the Filipinos. Removing corruption in government, we will enjoy the fruits of the oil, mineral, fruits, trees, aqua life, lahat ng mga pakinabang ng natural resources pakikinabangan natin lahat. Pero ngayon, hindi natin pinakikinabangan. Ang nakikinabang dyan, yung mayayaman, yung mahihirap, they remain poor. Yung tubig na napakarami sa atin, ang tubig eh, na sa kanil ng peso ng Batangas sa Kabite, hindi natin iniipon, hindi natin pinangalagaan ang grasya ng tubig na bubuo sa ating buong kapuluan every year. Binigay pa natin sa exclusive management ng private sector. Kaya ang tubig, pinakamahal sa atin ngayon. I'm paying so much money for water, which should really be given for free. I believe in the thinking of Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, you, know, you all know it. I know it. Very good. Sabi niya, Congressman, ang tubig dapat libre sa mamamayan. I really ask you, could you explain that for me? Because sabi niya, tubig, galing sa kalikasan, galing sa Panginoon. Bakit ang mahal-mahal ang tubig natin, mas mahal pa sa gasolina? That's a good answer. And to me, that's a good question to ask all of us. Why are we paying so much for water, which actually is free for all of us to enjoy? And if we handle it correctly, we can share the, the fresh water supply that we have to countries all around us, Hong Kong, Singapore, and all the other, Japan, and make all the money for the Filipinos and the citizens who are enjoying a good life in the Philippines. So, we need to take care of the corruption. And I'm happy that the President, again, is taking note of the condition prevailing in the water distribution. We cannot continue this kind of a system. We have to really be uh, reforming. So, it's not just Congress. Let me stress that. Kasi yung tao ngayon, ang sinisisi Congress, Congressman, puro korab niya. Relax lang tayo, huwag kayo masyadong magalit. Hindi na kongreso ang problema natin. Problema ang local government. Problema ang national agencies. Problema ang barangay. Problema everywhere. If we want to clean up once and for all, we have to reform the police. Because the reform should be in the criminal justice system. Hong Kong was once upon a time the poorest nation in Asia. Sa Hong Kong noong araw, Pina, puro sidewalk method niya, parang malaking-malaking divisorya yan. At nalulupo sa kanye at nag-magulo. Uh, Dahil yung polis kurap. Pero nung nareforma ang polis at yung kanilang criminal justice system, diyan nagsimula ang lahat ng reforma. Nagtagumpay sila sa paglilinis ng Hong Kong government. So at Hong Kong na. So you can do trading business uh, very, very easily because they have reformed a corrupted system that once upon a time today. So, if President Duterte succeeds, the Philippines will be a better place to live in. Yeah, and very wise words from a very wise man, Sir Aldrin. And with that, Sir Aldrin, Congressman Lito Tienza, thank you again for joining us here on Straight Talk. We'll see you again next time.